The late 90s had collectathons and the 2010s had gritty third person shooters, so I'm really glad the genre that seems to have inspired a lot of games in the early 20s are open world games that use Breath of the Wild's climbing and gliding and let you go anywhere right from the start. Chia is the latest game to feel at least a little bit inspired by Nintendo's open world explorer map, but with a few fresh spins of its own. Namely, you can be cow poo. This game makes me feel seen. Chia is a relatively chill open world exploration game that just released on PS4 and PS5 as a day one PlayStation Plus Extra title, as well as a timed Epic Games Store exclusive on PC, which is where I'm playing. If you know me well enough, you're probably expecting a recommendation, and you'd be absolutely right. It scratches an itch that similar games like Little Gator Game did for me last year, but on a much grander scale and with considerably more baby consumption. Those little bastards had it too good for too long. Quick disclosures, uh, developer Awaseb provided me with a code for the game just after launch, absolutely appreciated, but also I apologise in advance if I pronounce anything wrong. See, everything in Chia is based off of New Caledonia, a French archipelago off to the west of Australia, out in the Pacific Ocean, and pretty much every aspect of the game is inspired by the culture and customs of the indigenous Kanak people who call it home, though all of the names here are fictional out of respect for the culture. So when you're not gliding and climbing and throwing dogs into the ocean, you'll be participating in totem carving, playing the ukulele or dry fern leaves, eating their food, preparing kutums, and a whole bunch of other stuff. The game is steeped in culture, and you can feel it in almost every inch of the game, from the towns and villages you visit to the gorgeous soundtrack that accompanies you most places. Chia is a labour of love, an ode to the developer's homeland, and it's a very sincere game that's full of heart because of it. Even despite its surprisingly goofy tone, I wasn't expecting Chia to be this silly, but through both its gameplay and story, it's not afraid to be funny, or even a little bit morbid at the same time. So Chia's a girl living on an island with her dad, hanging out and slapping fern leaves and waking the neighbours at all hours of the morning, when suddenly her dad gets taken away by a henchman of King Miyavora. Enlisting the help of the inhabitants of not New Caledonia, she sets out to seek audience with the king and hopefully get her pops back, while making plenty of time to pet every animal she sees, go diving for pearls and dressing up like a crab. The story's pretty decent, largely bolstered to buy some good characters, especially Chia herself, who looks sweet and innocent but can certainly be impulsive and… Mm, in the moment, I guess. It's also held up further by its sense of humour, like how, for example, being tasked with gathering items for a cartoon to see Miyavora by his receptionist, while the next guy who walks in gets to see him right away because he was lucky enough to pull the right number. Also a few times where you can keep doing some very awkward actions with another character for as long as you like. At the crux of its gameplay is Chia's ability to soul jump. Slap that L1 button and you'll be able to aim at any animal or some inanimate objects you see, then possess them and horribly displace them from their family or owners. There are almost 40 animals you can possess, though it's a bit cheeky they say that when around half of them are fish who all do the same thing. But you can also be dogs, birds, deer, boars, cows, fat little friend-shaped geckos and even a couple of creatures based on the island's folklore. Possessing critters is fun, but I think possessing inanimate objects is even more so, as it ties into Chia having a pretty decent selection of moves that make traversal across the open world really fun. So you can become a rock, right? Dumb, you say. Stupid, you hark. What use is becoming a lump of mineral that lacks locomotion? Ha! <laughs> yeah, what now, bitch? Hold on, hold on, there's more. Get that up, you Jesus. She is pretty nimble. She can climb almost any surface in the game, glide through the air, slide down hills for a burst of momentum, catapult from the tops of trees, this is exactly as fun as it looks. But stringing these together is when the game really starts to sing. Catapulting from tree to tree, zipping down a mountain slide, flinging yourself into the air, then jumping into a rock or a coconut and rolling along until your soul meter depletes and you have to jump out. So you leap straight out, cling to a tree and start all over again. And it was just as fun doing it the hundredth time as it was the first. There's a lot to do in these islands too. The map's not huge, but I only see that as a strength as it makes it easier to navigate, but there's still plenty to do and find. In terms of collectibles, there are soul fruits you can consume to increase your stamina meter, which is used for climbing, gliding, and holding your breath underwater, and trinkets and pearls, which can be traded in for cosmetics, which themselves can also be found in chests. There are also campfires, places where you go to do funny scream, and docks to unlock, as well as a slew of challenges including races, shooting galleries, and diving boards. You can also carve totems, which are used to unlock doors to one of the game's eight shrines, where completing a challenge within will increase your soul gauge and allow you to become one with your trash self even longer. That's not included 
including the rock stacking that grants you access to soul melodies that let you summon animals, change the time of day, and a bunch of other stuff, or the enemy camps that will give you even more treasure chests and soul fruit. It sounds like a lot, but Shia's world is very dense, and you often won't have to go very far to find your next trinket or stumble across another enemy camp. And yeah, speaking of, Chia does have combat. This isn't a non-violent video game like you may have thought by looking at screenshots, but it's also not a big focus and it's not very in-depth because of it. Enemies are made of fabric and have to be set on fire to defeat them, so you need to either possess or throw an explosive or flammable object at them. Jerry cans, lamps, mysterious ooze, cow poo for some reason. It's pretty fun at first, possessing lamps and flinging them at enemies, but due to enemies dying in one hit as well as your health, your stamina meter, recharging almost immediately, death is a rare occurrence. Combat became about making my own challenges. How quickly can I clear this camp? Can I defeat every enemy without touching the ground in human form? But then the end of the game has some particularly large enemy strongholds where not only is finding every enemy in fabric pile kind of tedious, but explosive items can be hard to spot. Keeping my inventory stacked up with explosives was a bit of a hassle, especially when the game was asking me to choose between explosive rocks or the animal friends I kept stashing in my inventory. Because the dogs are free, you can just take them home. Well, I might not have a room. I guess I'll have to get rid of my crab. Be free. <laughs> my only other major complaint is that it does feel a bit like the soul jump mechanic goes underutilized. There are not a lot of places that require the use of animals or their natural talents, especially if you only follow the main quest line. You might possess a dolphin or a shark to move quickly and circumvent the lack of oxygen underwater, or most commonly, you'll summon a bird to fly from one location to the next as quickly as possible. But most other animals don't get their time in the spotlight. The one place they do is during a treasure hunt side quest, where you decipher maps to find the location of a chest that contains some backstory on one of the game's villains, as well as a bit of treasure and another map to lead you to the next one. Again, the soul jump feels a bit underused here, where you'll only ever need the occasional dog, crab or lamp, maybe a fish if swimming is required. Required, but this treasure hunt side quest plays into one of Chia's biggest strengths. It may not look it, but these islands have an incredibly memorable layout that you'll likely commit to memory pretty easily. And Chia's confident about this, because while there's a map and a compass, you can't see your current position on the map, only when you find and examine signposts. You can use pins to point you in the right direction, but otherwise you're on your own. And there were a few times where I was like, ah shit, I'm lost. Um, uh, oh, I know that tree, I must be around here somewhere. And it was deeply satisfying to know that I was right. The treasure hunt plays off of this. Early maps basically hand you the location on a silver platter, but later maps really require you to have been paying attention, and I get the feeling that if I replay this in a few years, and I very well might, it'll be like returning home after moving away to go to uni or something. Still, while I wish Chia used its neat little possession mechanic a bit more, its world is memorable, and Awaseb are confident that you'll be able to navigate it even without an icon on your map pinpointing your exact location. The treasure hunt plays off of this strength and ended up becoming my favourite part of the game because of it, even if I'd hoped it asked me to think a little more outside of it. But in its own way, that's to the game's strength as well. I hesitate to label this game wholesome in the same vein as games like Tinykin and Little Gator Game because of its subject matter, but it's still chill as heck. It's relaxing, it's one of those make your own fun kinds of games you can let loose and unwind with. Maybe being a bird doesn't have any other practical use outside of being a hasty method of travel between objectives, but you can still poop on people at will, so like, it's shitting in people's food makes up for that, right? Yes. Yes it does. So yeah, she is pretty gush dang good. I enjoyed it enough to try to 100% it, which is something I don't do a lot. 21 hours later and I've found everything barring a few fish that I can't be asked to find, so eh, 99% is close enough. But even if you just beeline to the credits, I still think Chia is a very charming and enjoyable little game that's made with a level of passion, love and respect that shines through every single aspect of it. And you can play as cow poo. I cannot stress that enough. There's a lot of poo in this episode, what the fuck? <laughs> Hey, quick shout out to Furball, Sofox, K, Damian Maxted, Riley Urban, Feeny Shea, Hihut Skyat, Jayette, Johannes Anderson, Karote the Katsune, Pear Basket, Phil Belk, Rodenbird, Skadia Scrim, Squid Superstar, Soul Gaming One, and Sadie Killer. Anyway, subscribe, hit that bell, follow me on Twitter, all that stupid crap. Uh, send me prayers, I'm playing Lord of the Rings The Third Age. You all said that was good, what the fuck is wrong with you?